the the contestants? Uh, yeah, you can do that. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, joining us now, your contestants on Arcade Jeopardy, free play Arcade Jeopardy. It's Spring Series champion, champion of Puzzle Night, champion of Tuesday Night Fights, champion of so much I've forgotten. Free oh, play sweet. Hall of Famer, number one free play Hall of Famer. Welcome, Dylan Smith. You. There you go. There's Dylan. Also, we have a man who really defies all explanations. A two-time free play fantasy football champion. A pro big buck hunter player. I don't even know what that means, but this man embodies it fully in both attitude and look. And, well, basically ESPN, the 8, the Ocho, follows this man around because they don't care about Big Buck Hunter as much as they care about my man, Ray Upshaw. Oof, oof. And, yeah. F for days. finally, yeah. our defending champion, who is declared the defending champion, <laughs> even though this has never happened before, because that's what his agent told me to introduce him as, oh my God. the superstar, the celebrity, our DJ, our love, and a man who's been booed and cheered from coast to coast on the eve of WrestleMania week, it is Michael Beltran. Yes, it is me. It is me. It is I. The one whom you, the one whom you seek. Yay, Mike. All right, Thank we're you. good to go. <laughs> Take it away, Josh. All right, welcome to Free Play Jeopardy. This is the first round, so it's normal Jeopardy. So we've got normal prize prices. I don't know. Uh, I've not watched a little episode of Jeopardy in a long time. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm only I'm only hosting because you know it's easier for me to read the questions because I wrote them rather than somebody else having to read them for the first time, right on the right live. All right. So the categories we have today are match the millennium. That category is about crossover. Video game, the movie, the game, the movie. <laughs> that category is about video game movies. What are you buying? <laughs> that category is about video game currencies. All in the family is about video game families. You thought it was Enix, but it was me, Chunsoft. That category is about uh, games that were made by developers other than the ones you thought they were. And it's a secret to everybody is about uh, cheats and secrets. So we're going to start with Mike P. Yes. Where would you like to start? Now, uh, I, I, I do want to say real quick, mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you all not to do certain strategies. I know that there is a strategy to jump around the board, and there's also a strategy to take all the most expensive ones first mm -hmm. but jeopardy does flow better and is more entertaining if you start <laughs> from the top and go down to the bottom so i'm gonna recommend that but you know i'm not gonna tell you not to do whatever your strategy might be all right all right i'm game let's do give me video game the movie the game the movie for 200 okay With 22 theatrically released movies, this video game series has had the most film adaptations. Um, <clears throat> oh, buzzers, buzzers, right? Oh, yeah, there's buzzers. So, do we buzz it here? Yes. Whoever wants to answer. Da, na, 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 na. I, Is this thing on? Up on? You can queue that up on Spotify. <laughs> I found it on Spotify, but I guess we have my stream. Music. Yeah, we we don't want we don't want to we don't want to hit with the copyright people, so we're having Chase do it for us. <laughs> Dylan go first. Oh. So Dylan, you're you, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, what is um, Pokemon? That is correct. Oh, oh good call. Sick. Uh, Resident Evil is second with 10. <laughs> if you include all the uh, animated ones. I didn't even realize there were that many Resident Evils. 
Oh, uh, films. Holy cow. Oh. Okay, what is the next category? <clears throat> uh, let's do... It's a secret to everybody for 400. Okay. Uh, yeah, Resident Evil, there's four CG films and six live action movies. Popular oh. in 90s video games, Big Head Mode first appeared as a cheat code in this game. Mike, you. Mike, Mike, Mike. I heard Mike. NBA Jam. What is NBA Jam? Who is NBA Jam? <laughs> Why is NBA Jam? Uh, Which correct. one is it? Yes, what is NBA Jam? Okay. Oh, okay. okay yeah, yeah, that's something you can help me with, Chris, is who buzzed in first, because I... I, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I thought it was Dylan, but... So right. why did we go for 200 there when it was supposed to be 400 for Dylan? Yeah, I thought it was 400. I thought he said 400. Oh, I'm sorry. I, uh -oh. Well, you read the, you read the $200 question, so 200 it is. I'll pay I'll pay better attention. Uh, what's the okay. next category? All right, so so it's it's my turn, right? Yeah. Michael right. Mike B has control of the board. Okay. Thank you. All right, let me get uh what are you buying for 200? This currency has appeared in more than 30 Capcom games. You. Dylan. Dylan. What is Zenny? Correct. Yeah. How do you know that? I've played a lot of Mega Man games. Oh. How can okay. anyone <laughs> even know that? Because they, they use it in like all the Capcom games. Pretty much. That's, that's their currency. But how does he know that? <laughs> I just told right. you. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan, what category would you like next? And I will pay attention to the number you pick this time. <laughs> we'll do uh, Match of the Millennium for 200. Okay. This character took a break. The guest referee in Punch Out. You. Dylan. It's Mario. Correct. Who is Mario? <clears throat> you heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Mario. Listen here, Dylan. <laughs> if you run away with this, we're going to check you in pronunciations. And then oh, one of us is going to be able to chime in. Ma Mario. Sorry. Mario. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's do... What are you buying for 400 Yeah. Uh, Chad is trashing me for not uh, correcting you about doing it in the form of a question. <laughs> well, <laughs> Originally just referred to as Yen in the Japanese releases... This is the English name of the currency in the Pokemon series. Oh, man. Come on, Dylan. <laughs> Come on, Dylan. <laughs> it's been a while since I played Pokemon. Come on, Dylan. Holy cow. Uh, Come on, Dylan. Why, why, why are my competitors cheering me on? Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know this one. Why, why is, I think the bigger question is why has Ray not even tried to answer it? Well, because I'm letting them take themselves out and then I'm coming in with the win at the end. There you go. Yeah. You. What oh, is yeah. dollar dollar bills, y'all? <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. That is incorrect. Oh. I was close, man. Uh, I knew it. F. F. Yes. Isn't it just the Pokemon dollar? That is correct. It is. Nice. Oh. What is the Pokemon dollar? Oh my what? gosh. <laughs> really? <laughs> is it Ray on that one? Bravo. Well played, Ray. I had no idea. <laughs> I only I've only ever seen the symbol. I never saw that. Yeah, aren't we deducting for wrong answers? Oh, is that the case? That oh yeah. Know? But oh, that's yeah. up to that's up to Josh. Uh I mean I if we want to do it that way. Split down to two hundred there. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> retroactively applying rules. Okay. I like it. That's how Jeopardy works, bro. I, 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 I agree. Let's do it like Jeopardy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 2,000, yes. Yeah. Uh, awesome. All right. All in the family for 200. All right. That's what you get for telling me I'm not in trying. In spite of the origin, Shigeru Miyamoto has said this is officially the last name of the brothers Mario and Luigi. You. Ooh, yes. Well trans. Mario. What is Mario. That is correct. Dang it. Even though it comes from the movie. <laughs> Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. Dang it. I knew that one. Chad's getting upset because Dylan got robbed for a joke. 
Everybody. Wait, nothing. aren't we supposed to not be looking at the chat? Hmm. I thought we were supposed to be able to you look at the chat. You are not <laughs> looking at the chat, my friend. Okay, I'll turn the chat off then. Don't yeah. mind. All right, let's do. Uh, you thought it was Enix, but it was me, Chunsaw, for two hundred. As the only developer to make canonical Legend of Zelda games, Cap as the only third-party developer, sorry, Capcom has made Oracle of Ages, Oracle of Seasons, Four Swords, and this game. You, Dylan. What is the Minish Cap? That is correct. Yes. What the hell? The Minish Cap? Yeah, it was a Game Boy Advance game. Just, just checking in here, Mike. Have you ever played ah. a video game before? <laughs> I have. All right. Yeah, this is this is my dark period. I need. I think maybe your buzzer is broken. Let, let's let's try them all out real quick. Ray, F, Dylan, you, Mike, Mike. <laughs> right, they seem to be working. All right, we're good. We're good. Okay, let's do video game, the movie, the game, the movie for four. Best known for roles in Agents of Shield, Stargate Universe, and Mulan. Ming Na Wen was also has also played this F. video game character. Ray. Yes, Ray Upshot. Chun Li. Street oh, I know this one. Dang that it. Is correct. Wait, he didn't phrase it as what a is, what is what is <laughs> what is <laughs> Everybody everybody gets one. Everybody else got one. So Yeah. We we have to have some leniency here on our first ever game of free play arcade Jeopardy. <laughs> Man, I knew that one. <laughs> Dude. You gotta get fast on the gun there, Mike. Mm -hmm. Who is Ray. always top tier? Oh man. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get tricky with it. I want all in the family for a thousand. Uh oh. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. In Tekken. Heihachi's large, complicated family has history of consorting with demons and running this company. You. Shit. Dylan. What is the Mishima Corporation? No. Wrong. Fuck. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Ch Chase, you're in charge of music. Uh, uh, who, who, who is that? that? That was Chase, our music guy. Uh, <laughs> he's... He, he's correct yeah. in this case that Dylan got the question wrong. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, wait. It, okay. I already yeah. answered. That. Anybody else? Okay. What? Do we... I, I missed the word. Bar, bar, bar. Anybody else? Anybody? <laughs> no, I'm good. My, my sabotage question worked perfectly fine. <laughs> okay. Smooth. Can you go in the negatives in Jeopardy? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Is, what is the Mishima Financial Group or Financial Mishima group. Zaibatsu? Either of those is. Yeah. There you go. Zaibatsu. That's why Tekken Zaibatsu is the big like website Mishima. to go to. Uh, uh, something. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> who, 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 who maintains control of the board in that case? Same one that, that uh, picked previously. Whoever won the last one. Yeah, so Ray. Okay, so Ray. Uh, I love being trapped. I love sending out traps. Match of the Millennium for four hundred. Thanks to crossover appearances, this fighting game series now takes place in the same universe as Ninja Gaiden. You boys are lucky I'm not in this. I have no idea what this is. Anyway. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> yes, Chris. <laughs> oh well, I mean, I'm just saying it's with times. Times up. These boys don't know. Right. It's 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 the DOA series. Yes, correct. Dead or oh, alive. Damn it! Oh, that is right. Ryu Hayabusa is playable in Dead or Alive. And, really? I and, didn't uh, know that. Uh, Ayane and Kasumi have shown up in later Ninja Gaiden. How about that? Oh man, control just goes back to me. Yeah, I, I think the time up beep is Chris gets to try to answer. I think that's what we were going to do. <laughs> fair enough, right. fair enough. All right. To everybody for 400. All right. This arcade fighting game has 18 secret characters. Na, 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 na. 
I think I know what it is, but I don't want to risk it. Hold on to my lead quite well. 18 secret characters. I, I really Sorry. don't know. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, what it? is... I don't know which one. I would guess it's a Tekken, so give me what is Tekken 2. Yeah. Yeah, Tekken 2. It is Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Wow. Oh, you're talking about the uh, the O characters. Yeah, I gotcha. If you've got to put in a code to play them, it counts as a Super I'm, I'm with you. Oh. S Sagat. Wait, does every... So every character has an O version, and then there's a Kuma as well, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh -oh. Ooh. Fancy. All so right, look up. Right. You still have control of the board. This is true. I need to know how many secret characters were in Tekken 2, because I swear I felt like there was over a dozen. It may have been. I don't know. A lot. I, mean, I, I was going to go with Tekken 2. A lot, I wasn't a lot. In it, so. it, it, there might be. I I did not check to see if any others had exactly 18, but I doubt there's any others that have exactly 18. The, the, this right. this group of three gets no sympathy for missing a, a question who or a, a, an answer whose question was super turbo. So you, you right. just go right on ahead confidently, Josh. Uh all in the Ray seat. still has the board. For four hundred family for one. Terry Bogard became the surrogate father of the son of this character. F. Yes, Ray Upshaw. Let me read the words here. Terry Bogard became the surrogate father of the son of this character. Do I have to say his full name or can I say his last name? Uh that's uh, that's not the right finally. question, I'm I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> what is <laughs> Geese. Uh, I will give it to you on that. That's not his last name. That's his first name. Is Geese Howard? Geese Howard. Howard. Nice job, Geese Ray. Howard. If you had Geese said who is Howard, I wouldn't have given it to you. But who is Geese? I, I'll give it to you. <laughs> yeah, because he gets his ass thrown off that cliff in uh, Garu. Yes. Sounds, it, sounds and, like every uh, Mishima, Mishima I've ever Fury. heard. But yeah, Rock Howard is his. All right, you I, just want the chat. The board. I just want chat to know that everybody was picking Team Dylan. Team Dylan is negative four hundred and <laughs> yeah. yeah, Ray. Well, yeah. there's still a lot of a lot of points on the board. Ooh. Okay, All right, video game the movie, the game the movie for a thousand, Dylan. Oh no. <laughs> In spite of being possibly Uwe Boll's biggest failure, with a four percent on Rotten Tomatoes, a sixty million dollar budget, and only thirteen million box office worldwide, this film has received two sequels. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> oh, I know this one. Fun. Two sequels. Da, na, 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 na. Da, na, na, na. You stuck going to. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> well, nothing new there. Afraid of the negative? No, I I just can't come up with the name of it. Oh my gosh. I have a guess. All right. Boop, boop, boop. All right. Postal. Uh, so Postal made less money, but had a smaller budget, so it was technically less of a failure. Is it House so of is, the Dead? Post Postal Postal didn't make any money because like no theaters wanted to show it. I, I it, when I was looking, I think like twenty theaters showed it. No, it was. In the name of the king, Dungeon Siege. Ooh. Oh yeah, I've never heard of that. Oh, it has a uh, it has Gandhi in it, right? What I was thinking of. It had Jason Statham in it. Yes. Really? Even it, 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 and he still made two sequels to this, even <laughs> though it was such a huge failure. What the heck? Sounds like Uwe Boll to me. All right. Yeah. I honestly thought it was gonna be House of the Dead or Blood Rain, but I couldn't remember them having both two sequels. Blood Blood Rain had two sequels. Alone in the Dark, I think, only had one. I oh, don't no, remember House of, if House of the Dead that had was, two sequels. Yeah, House of the Dead was that one where they did like the really crazy like shotgun shots where they were doing 360 motions. And yeah, yeah, we need literally. a whole shotgun category just for Ray. <laughs> he, he's no Uwe Blob, former center of the Dallas Mavericks in the 80s, Chase. <laughs> All right, Ray. You're the wrong trivia. Right. I thought it was Enix, but it was me, Chunsaw, for 400. Long Juju. <laughs> Known for their licensed titles like the Dragon Ball Z Budokai series, this company took over development for the two most recent Street Fighter games. You. Dylan. Dylan. What is Bandai Namco? 
I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right about this. Dang, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else have it? This company too. Who who developed Street Fighter Four and Five? Is this? <laughs> yeah. But also my dark period. <laughs> All right. The answer is who is Dimps? 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 Yes. Yes. Or as Boat Guy puts it in the chat, it's Dimps, you nerds. <laughs> <laughs> right, Never heard Ray. of Dimps. What the heck? So, okay. We're arcade game players. It's okay. How exactly does it work if somebody doesn't phrase it in the form of a question and we're, we're hard asses about that? Does if we're hard, if we're hard asses though? about it, then they miss and they get, they get charged for chiming in. So and then somebody else gets to immediately buzz it in and that's just correct. take it? That's correct. Okay. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> So, Ray, pick again. Uh, match of the Millennium for 600. <laughs> this guest character for Soul Calibur was so small that they could not be thrown, and you. most high attacks would miss them. Dylan. Who is Yoda? That is correct. Ooh, I would have got that wrong. Good job, Dylan. Almost back to zero. <laughs> I knew as soon as they said small, Dylan said you, and I was like, crap. Mm -hmm. oh, I got I got that one. A little short on the stick. Do they make you wait for them to finish reading the they question? Do, they do, they do. We should we should institute that. Okay. okay. He has to go. <laughs> he should but, but but starting now. So after yeah, it, ha yeah, yeah. it it you get the buzz in the moment after he finishes again, reading the again, question. Again, haven't watched in a long time. It's okay. Uh, it's okay. We'll figure this I'm out. Also I'm not familiar job. with Jeopardy. Uh let's do what are you buying for six hundred? In the original Legend of Zelda, this was the maximum number of rupees that Link could carry. You, Mike, Dylan, uh, Dylan. What? What is nine hundred ninety-nine? Uh, I'm sorry, that is incorrect. <laughs> you suck. Boards open. <laughs> was it? Mike, Mike, Mike. Ninety-nine. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. No, no. <laughs> it's not ninety-nine. Ray, do you want it? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Racing pretty. <laughs> uh, it is 255 oh, because that goodness. is the maximum value you can put in Eight a bit. It. Right. That's right. I knew there was stuff Where that cost that over 100, but could not think happen. All right, Dylan, you still have control of the board, though. Okay. Let's do what are you buying for 800? What are you buying? This Animal Crossing character is named for the game's unique currency. Oh. <laughs> I don't even play this game. <clears throat> Screaming in the chat is deafening. <laughs> you. Uh, yes, Dylan. Who is Isabel? That is correct. Okay. Her name is shaped like the bag when you have a bag of bells. Wasn't her head? Her, not her head. Her head. Yes. Yeah. Her head is shaped like, and her name is Isabel because her head is shaped Isabel. Ha! Huh. That's cool. I I had to think about it for a moment. I'm like, oh, it's <laughs> named for the currency. Huh. All right. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You did it. I'm at negative <laughs> zero. All right. Cool. Uh, let's do. Uh, All in the family for six hundred. This Nintendo family performs their own rap song on Nintendo 64. F. Ray Upshaw. Uh, the Kong family. I'm sorry you didn't you. say the norm of a former question. Oh, oh, the Kong family. oh no. Or the Kong family? What is the Kong family? Uh, Why who, is? Who is the Kong It's family? one of those. Yeah. It's got to be one of those. Who, who, who are the Kongs? But who you, are the Kongs? You, you, said, you said who are the Kong family that's... Oh, wait, I have a question. Yeah. You should buzz in. Round? Buzz in if you got the question. Yes, there's a double Jeopardy round, and there will be a final Jeopardy question. No, but like, is do? there another set of questions after this board, or is it that's yes. Yeah, the double Jeopardy is a second board. Ah, okay. <laughs> we can take a break in between. Okay, yeah. let's do It's a Secret to Everybody for 600. A 
Originally a programming shortcut used for testing that was never removed, the most famous code, the Konami code, first appeared in this game. Mike. 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 What is Contra? I'm sorry, that is incorrect. What? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Wait, uh, F, F. Ray, Ray Upshaw. Uh, um, let me think about this. <laughs> what is Gradius? That is correct. Woo! Yes, it, it got most popular for Contra, which is why it was called the Konami Code so long in the U.S., because that's where people first really learned about it, but it showed up in Gradius first. How about that? The, the chat is accusing you of looking at the chat, Ray. How say you? Mm. Accusing me of looking at the chat? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sitting here just drinking. I I believe my man, Ray. Gra Gradius is a free-play arcade game, and but, the Konami code is included. I would have answer, answered faster if I wouldn't have got slammed on fucking Donkey Kong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got control aboard, Ray. Uh, video game, the movie, the game, the movie for 600. In Mortal Kombat, Johnny Cage says to Goro, this is where you do this. F. F. Yes. What is fall down? That is correct. Woo! Uh. <laughs> Ray Upshaw. A substantial lead. Hell okay. yeah. What's your next uh, next video game? The movie, the game, the movie for eight hundred. Originally created to be Bowser's children, Iggy and Spike instead appear in the Super Mario Brothers film as Bowser's this. I realize that's awkwardly worded grammar, but yes, it is very. <laughs> <laughs> I've never watched it. <laughs> okay, that's uh, time. Is it? Burp, burp, burp. Is it? Uh, is it his his uh, pets? Uh, no, they are his cousins. Oh. Cousins. Okay. It's a little weird. Oh uh, well, I get it. You know, they're they're it's Mario, Mario, Luigi, Mario. They're his cousins. They're gonna go. Extort the plumbers, the Italian, <laughs> something like that. I don't know. I can see it. Okay, Ray. You thought it was Enix, but it was me, Chun Soft for 600. Noise Factory developed sequels for multiple other companies' games, including the Neo Geo outing of this Atlas fighting series. I'm lost. Oh, gosh. Nobody? Okay. Do, 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 uh, does co-host or Ian have the answer? Developed sequels for... Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I was, I was, I was sharing the uh, link. That's, that's my... What my... The answer is, what is Power Instinct? Uh, they made Match Match Melee. Match Melee. Match Melee. Close to my heart. Power Instinct is an Atlas fighting game series, but Noise Would Factory is a match of melee. I've never Would even heard of that. Melee there? If you'd said match of melee, I would have taken it. But... Okay, I was like, yeah, because uh, it was either match of melee or it was going to be uh, Fatal Fury. I don't think you're Fury. All right, you uh, still got the board? Let's go, what are you buying for a thousand? Minted by Lucifuge. This is the official currency of the demon world, the Makai, also known as the Expanse. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> they get harder as you go to the bottom. I have no idea what any of these are. <laughs> I 
Yo, you can just boop us on that one. Jesus. It sounds like. <laughs> I have no what idea. Is, it is what is Maka? That is the currency in all the Shin Megami Tensei games. Oh my gosh! Ah, dang it, man! How did you not know this, Dylan? Last year, I can't even say all those words. <laughs> I didn't know that any of those were the same. <laughs> were related? Isn't that a fish? Uh, or a bird? All right, Ray. Uh, all in the family for eight hundred. After the events of Raccoon City, Claire Redfield goes searching for her brother Chris in this city. I didn't play that one either. <laughs> Dang, man. <laughs> I don't think it was game. Sleeper. No, it was. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah, crap. Mike, you can get back into this. Mike, have you ever heard of Resident Evil before? <laughs> I only know Raccoon Suit. <laughs> Actually, it's Tanuki Suit, you plebeian. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Chris, do you know it? Uh, I thought it was an island, but I don't know the city. We're talking so Code she Veronica. Gets, she gets captured and taken to an island, but she goes looking for Chris in Paris. I did not know that. In Paris? Is that, that in is, Code Veronica? That is, yes. That is in Code Veronica, yes. Yeah. All right, Ray, you still got the board. Wow, it's like I'm controlling this game. I was supposed to be losing. <laughs> Ooh. It's a secret to everybody for 800. Likely the first cheat cartridge, This game, the Game Genie was created by this game development studio. Oh, man. <laughs> Who made the Game Genie? That's the question. Who did make the game, Genie? Aladdin. No, that's who rubbed the game, Genie, first, Chase. Okay. Hey, Mike, 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 Mike. Yeah, Mike. No, dang it. Hold on. <laughs> that's not in the form of a question, Mike. Come on, get with it. Hmm. I think he's losing a couple points here. Uh, I know, okay. Well, okay. Who is Galoob? No, that is incorrect. Oh. Dig a hole, Mike. Dig, dig, dig. Um, I think I know this one, but I'm not going to risk my substantial lead on it. Burp, burp, burp. Isn't it? It is, it is who is Codemasters? Oh, Codemasters. Code yes, the same people who made the Micro Machines game. I thought it was a toy company. Like Milton Bradley. I thought I was thinking of uh, I thought the Rainbow That was one of those, the bootleg company. It, it was it was sold by Galoob. It was developed by designed and developed by Codemasters. Oh, Ooh. Okay. there it is. There, yeah. All right, let's go to it's a secret for everybody for a thousand. In Area Fifty One, avoiding all enemies and shooting only the first three star members lets you play as one of these. <laughs> I know this one. <laughs> I can't remember the first name. No. Uh, uh. <laughs> we a do a game because you walk away. <laughs> <laughs> we do have an arcade champion of this mode, and it is Ray Upshaw. Just saying. And I know how you do this, too, because you shoot the, the three bad guys at the very beginning. Well, yeah, that's what it says right there. You shoot the, you shoot the three <laughs> good guys. It literally says that on the screen, right? Guys. <laughs> that's, why you, that's also why you literally can't die in the intro. <sighs> you cannot lose your last health in the intro. Yeah, I know I... Uh, uh, Sounds like we're out of time. We... All right. Do we get the boop, boop, boop? Yeah. Boop, 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 boop. <clears throat> yes, it is. What is a cron hunter? Oh my god! Good news, Ray. Brisket for the brisket. If we ended yep. it here, you'd be beating Michael Beltran by more than perfect. <laughs> for for those for those uh, watching who don't know, yes, if you do this, if you start from the very intro rather than skipping the intro, which is an option you can do, and shoot the first three star members, and don't shoot any of the aliens. 
it will it will put you into the next level as a cron hunter and the screen will just look all funky and and your you bullets will look different yeah yeah huh. and right. more damage we still got control of the board man i'm just killing it over here <laughs> should have got that one right though <laughs> uh match of the millennium for 800 in spite of the name Neo Geo Battle Coliseum was actually developed for this arcade system. Da, 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 da. What's the answer, guys? We don't know, we don't know. Come on, Beltran, I know you own this game. I, I have it for PS2. <laughs> Oh, I don't think wait, it was originally. Mike, but... Mike, 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 yeah, Mike. Yeah, Mike. yeah, Mike, yes. Oh, Mike. I remember seeing this on a recent eBay thing. Um, <laughs> is that your final answer? Uh, uh, what, what is at, at, at some wave? At some, I, I'll, I'll give it some wave. Very close. A Tom is wave. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's it. Even I, even though it's called the Neo Geo Battle Coliseum, <laughs> it's on the Tom is wave. You got one right, Mike. There it is. He's back to negative 1,000. Yeah. yeah. I'm so proud. <laughs> All right. Mike, you have control of the board. Oh. Cool. Okay. Oh, my. Um, All right. Let's do a match of the millennium for 1,000. This multi-directional shooter includes playable characters from Ghosts and Goblins, Street Fighter, Darkstalkers, Mega Man, and Three Wonders. I feel like Beltran just got Palmer on his mind, and that's it. <laughs> shooter. Multi-directional shooter. Shooter McGavin. Shooter. Five seconds. I, I'm hung up on multi-directional shooter. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, like, like Smash a... TV. Oh, like Smash TV. Huh. Oh. Ooh, I really don't know then. <laughs> burp, burp, burp. Yep. And I don't know. I have no idea. Street Fighter, get it in is. it. What is Cannon Spike? Ah. Huh. Named after you the. Play, you can play as Arthur, BB Hood, Cammy, Mega Man, and uh, one of the elf guys from Three Wonders, oh, and also a character, also a character who's basically the girl from Aliens vs Predator. Isn't that on PS2? It's on Dreamcast. Oh. One category okay. left. There, there was also an arcade for this. <clears throat> All right, Mike, 800 or 1,000? Let's go 800. Western developer Secret Levels would attempt to revive Sega's Golden Axe series with this game. Oh, shit, man. <laughs> Was that a buzz? Was no. <laughs> I made no such sound. That was a vomit. <laughs> it was a bad game. Uh, that's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll just boop, boop, boop there. Burp, burp, burp. What, is, uh, what is Golden Axe Beast Rider? Wow, dear, never heard of that one. You, it was on. You know PS3. you own it. Yes, sweet. Oh. All right, last one. Dark this period. ubiquitous ghost developer has developed many games without credit, including Yoshi's Cookie. Dragon Warrior Monsters and Resident Evil Code Veronica. What does ubiquitous mean? Uh, they're all over the place. Okay. They developed a lot of games for other companies without taking credit. Huh. They're they're like known for this. And like they don't show up in on the carts or anything. They just yeah. Burp, burp, burp. Right. It is. Who is Toze? Toze. Toze. Yeah. Huh. All right. That concludes. The only, the only games that they take credit for are their own original series, which is the series of games called Starfy. Oh. Interesting. That concludes round one of Free Play Arcade Jeopardy. Looking at the scoreboard.
It's Ray Upshaw, way in the lead with eighteen hundred dollars. Dylan Smith, doing quite well for himself with six hundred. Then the number zero. Then four digits behind that, <laughs> Osagat member, Michael Beltran. Answer for you yourself, will, Mike. Answer for yourself. You will rule the day you crossed me, Trebek. <laughs> All right, we're going to need you to get back into the positive just so that you can be in Final Jeopardy, Mike. We, 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 want it. we can't lose your star power. The, the ratings go down. Yeah, you have to have points to lose. Yeah, you got you to bring it back. Okay, uh, do we want, like, a short quote commercial break while I, before the double jeopardy or what we, hmm. we can do, do do you do you have it can you cue it right up do you guys need a break yeah. are you go are you all right are you, how was your pbr supply ray upshaw uh i mean i got a whole bunch of pickle fucker and rainbow sherbert from the <laughs> i gotta go back for the uh i gotta go back for the pbr but i really uh, I really no, feel like i i just shouldn't have asked <laughs> Uh, I guess uh, inter interview time. Uh, Mike B, how is your your break treating you? Your break from reality and, and the public? <clears throat> I haven't had a haircut in three weeks. Okay, okay. Is it looking good? good. What, color, what color is it? Black. <laughs> My hair is black. Dylan Smith, how are you feeling? Uh, good. I'm chilling. I'm having a good time. Just chilling. How is your PBR supply, Dylan? Uh, non-existent. Did Ray? Did Ray <laughs> take it all? Uh, if there was alcohol here, I'm sure he would have. Fair enough. And is uh, who is who is Ashley rooting for in your house? Um, her nap at the moment. Okay, so she's on team nap. I'm just gonna put that right here. <clears throat> All right, looks like we're ready for round two. Take it away, Josh. Okay, so the categories in this round, Double Jeopardy, where the prizes are double the value, are the Raccoon City Incident, which is about video game viruses. Hmm. What a Terrible Night to Have a Curse, which is about Castlevania. I heard you like quiz games, so I put questions about quiz games in your quiz show, which is about quiz games. <laughs> Power up which is about power-ups. Better than an arcade one-up, which is about home ports of arcade games. <laughs> <laughs> and Street Puncher 2, which is about bootlegs and knockoffs. Oh! Well, uh, Ray led, so he starts, right? That's right. Ray, you have control of the board. Do we have any daily doubles on this yet? I don't think so. No, there's not really a way to do that on this thing. So. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Better than an arcade one up for 400. This famous arcade beat em up was enjoyed by many pairs of friends, but when ported to NES, lost simultaneous multiplayer. Mike. 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 What is Double Dragon? That is correct. Look at that. Suck it, Trebek. <laughs> He's woken up. All right, you've got control of the board, Mike. Don't give him credit yet. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's go. I heard you like quiz games, so I put questions about quiz games in your quiz show for 400. The first ever Jeopardy video game was released on this system. Mike. Mike. What is... Um, uh, Commodore 64. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Mm. F. Ray. Ray. What is the NES? That is correct. Suck it! They, they apparently developed one for the Atari, but it was canceled. Oh. But, that's weird, it didn't... I use it, it didn't clear it from the board. There we go. He's Ray? 2200, I thought. He was at 18? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. There we go. All right, everything's fixed now. Right. Great. <clears throat> I heard you like quiz games, so I put questions about quiz games in your quiz show for 2000. Yeah. 2000. 
now right. developed by Jackbox Games as part of the Jackbox Party Pack. <laughs> you don't know you don't know Jack was originally developed by this studio. <laughs> no. Well, someone here plays a lot of Jackbox. I know. I know and... that. Uh, I do, but I can't remember. <laughs> no. <laughs> this was the win right there. Would have put you all the way. Oh man. All right. Beep beep beep. Is, is it Jelly Vision? Snow? Is it Jelly Vision? That is correct. Who yeah. is Jelly Vision? Yeah. Who's the real fan here, Ray? Boom. <clears throat> Get roasted. All right, Ray, you still have the board. All right. Um, the Raccoon City incident for 400. This parasitic fungus hijacks the bodies of insects and was the real-life inspiration for the pandemic in The Last of Us. I know the one it's talking about, but I don't know the name of it at all. All right, beep, beep, beep. No idea. It, it, what is cordyceps? cordyceps? That's cordyceps. the one that takes over like ants, right? Correct. It, it will take over ants and some other small insects. It will hijack their bodies and, and uh, just basically mind control them to walk them to areas where they can better breed. <laughs> I just want you guys to know every time you come up with an answer that I don't even know what to say or a spell worth of shit, like, it makes me feel good. <laughs> it is nightmare fuel. All right, Ray, you still got it. Uh, what a terrible night to have a curse for 400. <laughs> While the bulk of this game is set five years later, the beginning of Symphony of the Night is actually a retelling of the climax of this game. Oh, crap, I forgot these are Castlevania. That's what, that's what that's what what a terrible night to have a curse is from. Yeah, no, they're gonna wreck me on every single one of these questions. I don't even play Castlevania. Boat guy is real mad. <laughs> As he should be. Look, boat guy, I yeah. don't play Castlevania. Okay. Beep you... beep beep. Do you know? Oh wait. Do you know Castlevania? Yes. No, that is incorrect. <laughs> I thought it was just the first Castlevania. <laughs> Is it, uh, do you know, Chris? Is it Dracula X? I yeah, know the answer Dracula to this X, so hard. Dracula X or Rondo of Blood. Yeah. You start out Symphony of the Night by fighting Dracula as uh, Richter Belmont. Yeah, I, I <coughs> didn't know what which specific because I mean, they all end up there. <laughs> or, or as I type apparently typed it out, Rondo Faux Blood. <laughs> For future reference, we do not touch what a terrible night to have accursed. It's I knew none of that. Uh, uh, power up for 400. Making three baskets in a row in NBA Jam gives you this power up. Mike. 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 Fire. What is fire? Fire. Oh, yes. Fire. 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 What is, what is flames slash on fire? Oh, yes. Almost back to zero there. We need you back to zero, my man. All right. You got control of the board. Um. <clears throat> All right, let's do Street Puncher Two for four hundred. This Data East fighting game is most well known for a lawsuit due to its similarity to Street Fighter Two. F. Right. Uh, Ray. Isn't it World Heroes, or what is World Heroes? I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Ah. Uh. Really. That would have been my guess. You can feel free to buzz in and make the same exact guess, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen that on Jeopardy before. It didn't mm -hmm. go well. Hmm. All right. Wait. Beep, beep. Oh, oh, oh. What? Okay. Was there, was there no, a buzzer? No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Beep, beep, beep. Is it uh, fi fighting history? Fighter's history? That is correct. Yeah. What is fighter's history? Boat guy says balloon. Balloon. <laughs> All right, so you still have the board, Mike. All right. <clears throat> Let's do better than arcade one up for eight hundred. 
drastically changed for the home release, the NES Ninja Gaiden lacked this button from its arcade counterpart. Featured in Free Play Fort Worth. Oh dear. It was right across from Pac-Land, Mike. I mean, the NES only had two buttons, so like, how do you take away a button? <laughs> no, no, no. The NES version lacked a button that the arcade one had. What though is the button that it didn't have? Yeah, it's yeah. like a special button or something. All right, Mike. Chris, Mike. 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 What is it? What is the um the button on the joystick? That's not good enough. Uh, what is it, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> what is the throw button? That's it. It's yeah. The, it's the grapple button. Yeah. Grapple button. You had oh. to, they had a separate button for holding for grabbing walls and stuff. It's on top of the joystick on the arcade version. So that's negative eight hundred for Mike, right? Yes, that's what I just did. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> but you still have the board, Mike. Should get half credit for that. I knew the button. Um, let's do let's do quiz show for eight hundred. <clears throat> this Capcom developed quiz game combines trivia and monster battles. I wonder the answer one for just to play it. If I get my streaming stuff set up, uh, we should stream this at some point. I, I have it on a, a, a Capcom like collection on PS2, Capcom Arcade collection. I like that idea. Is it a CPS2 game? Or wait, you can tell me after. Uh, CPS1, I think. Gross. Beep, beep, beep. All right. I have no idea. Uh, it is, what is Quiz and Dragons? Quiz and dragons. dragons. Okay. How about that? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play this. Things I would yeah, never I play touch. that too, and I got excited because I was like, "Oh man, it's probably like a CPS two thing," and it's not. All right, let's do uh, power up for eight hundred. Going in a door and coming out drunk in Sunset Riders gives you this power up. <laughs> <laughs> Drunk is a power up, I thought. <laughs> <clears throat> Man. You come out drunk. Isn't that. <laughs> I need this a couple of times. This is. This is like a 50% chance. <laughs> All right. Beep, beep, beep. Ray, you don't know you're coming out of a door drunk right now as we I speak. I know, right? I'm like, oh, man. Is it the shotgun? No. no. Certain characters have a shotgun. It is rapid fire. There's I only just, two power ups in the game. Rapid I really fire and dual gun. I really just wanted the answer to be shotgun, and then Ray could have gotten it wrong. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, that's right. I remember now. I have <clears> if you that's, come a, that's out, a bluff, if you Mike. Out, that's a bluff. If you come out with a. Uh, with two uh, hookers, that it's <laughs> Mike knows about that too. No, I don't. If you, it's basically, if you went into a bar, you get rapid fire. If you went into a brothel, you get dual guns. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see here. Let's go. All right, better than arcade one up for twelve hundred. With hardware and games identical to their arcade counterparts, the Neo Geo AES home console originally retailed for this price. Oh, what the heck? Oh, man. This is the meanest one. This is the only number one. I think I may know this one, too. Mike. All right, Mike. What I, is... I'll, I'll give it... Uh, because it's a number one, I'll give it if you're within 50. Okay. What is... Let's see. What is $600? I said I'd give it to you if it was in within 50 It was $650. Oh, my God. Ah. Suck it, Trebek. <laughs> All right. Look at that. Almost back to zero, Mike. Okay. Still got the board. 
<clears throat> All right. Better than RK1 up for 1600. When Capcom redesigned Bionic Commando for the home release, they added this person as the surprise villainous boss whose head you get to explode. <laughs> you. Dylan. Dylan. Who is Hitler? That is correct. Shit. Ray's disappointed he didn't get the Hitler question right. That's very interesting. <laughs> Yes, yeah, su sudden and surprise Hitler in Bionic, the home version of Bionic Commando. <laughs> they give him a goatee in the English version to make you think he wasn't. Yeah, they, give, was him, they give him a mask and rearm yeah. so that so that he the, uh, is plausible is deniability. Overt. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's do uh, the Raccoon City incident for 800. The head explosion is very good, too. Like, yes. Eye comes out and everything. All right. Developed by Umbrella USA to surpass the tyrant virus. This virus was also involved in the Raccoon City incident. A question actually related directly to the name of the category. <laughs> hmm. F. Ray. I'll go out swinging. Is it the G or what is the G virus? That is correct. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Golgotha virus or G virus. Way to go, Ray. Mike, <laughs> could, do you know the answer to anything that's not off brand Pac Man? Um, Just buzz in every time and say Tiger. There, Tiger. Is, there is a Pac Man related question in one. I'm looking at you, Mike. Oh. Yeah. Raccoon City incident for 1200. <clears throat> This World of Warcraft status effect had a bug that caused an outbreak that was so bad that the CDC used it as a case study for what may happen in a real-life outbreak. Ooh, uh, what is... Uh, you. <laughs> Dylan. Dylan. <laughs> what is corrupted blood? That is correct. Nice. Okay, cool. Alright, you've got the board, Dylan. Uh, let's see. Let's do Raccoon City for 1600. In Final Fantasy series, this virus, the virus or disease status effect typically prevents this. Huh. I can hear Raid Googling now. No, that's, that's, that's me talking in chat. <laughs> I don't even know which one, which Final Fantasies that would be in. It's in multiple. Huh. All right, beep, beep, beep. Is it is it healing? That is correct. Yeah. A healing. A zombie status as well, right? Uh, I think so. I think zombie is just a different name for virus and disease. Well, zombie, yeah. you would yeah. heal and, it, it, and you would take you. damage yeah. as yeah. a result of it. Yeah. So, uh, let's do Wrecking City for 2000. Uh, in Dr. Mario, there are three colors of viruses to eliminate. Red is fever, blue is chill, and yellow is this. You. Dylan. What is weird? That is Who correct. Is... Chris knows that one. What game is this? <laughs> Your favorite. Your favorite. <laughs> See, I, I thought that one, I don't know. See, it's hard to determine how hard certain questions are. I thought that one would be kind of hard because, like, I always remember the other two because they have the good songs. Right, the songs are named after them. But the last yeah, one is. But I never remember It's weird. just weird. <laughs> That's how I always remembered it. All right, he, you still got the board. Uh, let's do Power Up for 1200. The vehicles in the Metal Slug series are all categorized under this name. You. Dylan. Metal Slug. What is Metal Slug? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say that is incorrect. Dang it. <laughs> does anybody else have a guess? F. Ray? What are slugs? That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The metal slug is the tank. Right. I, I thought it was 
variations on metal slug so i <clears throat> because they have like the the plane and all those i should remember right. that because i have a record for that all right ray you got the board i gotta see the board first i feel like I'm yeah, it's, a, it's a little awkward since you guys i guess are behind but i'm clicking on it let's go better than an arcade one up for 2000 on the SNES home port of Ninja Warriors, there was only one of these, but the arcade version had three. Damn. There was a home port? Yeah, on Super Nintendo. They actually uh, made it better. <laughs> the arcade game's kind of boring, and they made it play a lot better on the SNES version. This isn't the one we played the other day before we got quarantined, right? No, 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 that's Ninja Masters. This is a like a beat em up. Gotcha. Yeah. There's even a newer version that came out and added two more characters, made the gameplay even better. That's another thing that I could stream. Wait, you? Yes. Dylan. What are playable characters? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I had to try. <laughs> All right, beep, beep, beep. Uh, the answer is monitors. The original arcade version was on three screens. So obviously when they put it on home for it, oh, they had to reduce oh, it down oh, to one I screen. It backwards. Oh no. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Only one of oh, okay. Alright, Ray. <laughs> the plan is coming together. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta stay away from that one terrible night. <laughs> that category doesn't exist. <laughs> Let's get rid of that. <laughs> uh, I heard you like quiz your quiz games for twelve hundred. Professor Pac-Man was developed without authorization from Namco by this company. Mike. Mike. <laughs> Bally. What is yeah. Bally? Yeah, ba Bally Midway, but Bally's good. Enough. I didn't know you guys put a gimme question in here for Mike. You suck at Trebek. <laughs> yeah, ba Bally Midway made Professor Pac-Man be okay from Namco at all. And they did not put out very many of them. But it was so good. Michael Beltran is like the all-time world high score holder at that game. At Professor was... Pac-Man? Mm -hmm. Didn't like Billy Miltro come to Mike to ask him how to play Pac-Man? Not not yeah. actual Pac-Man, Professor Pac-Man. That's what you asked Mike how to play. <laughs> All right, Mike, you got the board. Um, let's go with quiz show for sixteen hundred. Saki, a character from Capcom's quiz slash dating game Quiz Nairo Dreams. I forgot the dream. Also appeared as a playable character in this game. I think I know this one. Wait. Uh. You. Dylan. Dylan. What is? I'm gonna butcher the name. It's a Tatsu. I'm just gonna say Tatsu versus Capcom because I don't remember what the rest of the name was. It was there in fourth. I know the cab. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you? Because I don't know the name. What's that? Tatsu what do you think? Yeah, I think give it to him if that's it. Okay. Yes, it's what is Tatsunoko versus Capcom. Yeah. Okay. She's an assist character in MVC One, but she's playable in Tatsunoko versus Capcom. Because I remember seeing the character's name in the game when I was screwing around with it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she's the red girl with a big giant gun. She's from a quiz game. Okay. Wow. Quiz game. What the heck, man? Crap, I gotta pay attention again. Oh man. Just part of the space police. I got gotta break in with a report from the stream chat. Uh Michael Beltran's partner, Turtle Power, very upset, says, Dang Mike, you have the board too. Wait, why are you talking about Turtle Power being Michael Beltran's partner? We we established that for this for yeah, this game, yes. My partner tomorrow night. 
Well, not tomorrow I, I don't night. I have the chat on my screen. Yeah, not t- not tomorrow night, but for, for right now, Michael Beltran's playing for Turtle Power. Ray, you are playing for General Yegov, and Dylan is playing for J Pong. That's not Turtle Power, Chris. What's that? According to chat. That's not Turtle Power. It's my bad. Day. Another player. <laughs> Huang, uh, okay, Huang number. so Dylan, you've got board. Who knows I have power that up for 1600? The weapon power-ups in Contra are actually in the shape of the logo of this enemy organization. Ooh, I don't know that anymore. If you think about what the logo is, you could probably guess. <laughs> All right, beep, beep, beep. Is it wings? Is it like, like eagle and wings and crap? It is. What is Red Falcon? Ah, red. it does look like a Red Falcon. Yeah. You're actually, the power-ups are the enemy's logo, which is very weird to me. Interesting. Hmm. All right, Dylan. Okay, let's do power for 2,000. Requiring all hard tanks, upgrades, sub-tanks, and bosses... Ryu's Hadouken can be acquired in Mega Man X by revisiting this stage. You! Dylan. Armored Armadillo's stage. What is Armored Armadillo's stage? That is correct. Yes. Ugh. All right, you got bootlegs and knockoffs in Castlevania. Those are the only ones left. All right, uh, let's do Street Puncher 2 for 2,000. For 2,000, okay. Although their game is now a household name, Atari ended up having to pay royalties to this person when they were accused of copying a game from the Magnavox Odyssey when making Pong. Huh. I don't think it's Tiger. <laughs> I mean, Nick, if Mike happens to to scum his way out to a victory, I'm definitely making his uh his his uh buzzer tiger next time, so he inadvertently buzzes in all the time. <laughs> well, I never knew. Uh, beep beep beep. Do you know Chris? Cues of copying a game from Magnavox Odyssey. I don't. Let's see. They, who did they pay oh. royalties to when they um, were accused of? Ugh. All right. Yeah, I'll I don't give know. Everybody, I don't one know. more chance. Who made the Magnavox Odyssey? Tiger. Uh, Magnavox. Tiger. Tiger. Who is the Who is the grandfather of video games? Oh, uh, uh, shoot. The Godfather of video games is, shoot, the owner of Chuck E. Cheese. My I'm just like what I was saying. Chuck E. Cheese. It is. Who is Ralph Bear? Ralph. That, and that is not who I was thinking of either. I was thinking of the creator of Atari, who later yeah, bought. That is. Huh. I am ashamed at your I lack was of video game history and all about, um, I was going to ask if it was. Uh, I'm sorry, one of us is playing this game right now, and the other one's running the board. <laughs> uh, let's do Street Puncher 2 for 1600. Competing with the more popular Mario Brothers, these sisters started as a Mario copy but decades later gained their own distinct series. Sister. <laughs> now Mike's intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> sisters. You're going to love these sisters, Mike. Pot bellies, mustaches. It's great. It's right up your yeah. side. Right up your alley. Mario. Love them. Jeez. <laughs> Peach Mario and Daisy Mario. <laughs> All right, beep, beep, beep. It is, who are the Gianna sisters? Back in the 80s, somebody made a game that was basically an exact copy of Mario, but with replaced sprites called the Gianna sisters. And then, like what, something like four years ago, they got new brand new games that came out. Gianna sisters, Twisted Dreams, and another one. Never heard of those. But supposedly, of they're... they're <laughs> People say that they were there was a lawsuit over it, but there was not actually a lawsuit. Sure. 
but yeah. Let's so, keep yeah. going back up. Street Puncher 2 for 1200 This Korean-developed rhythm game takes the DDR pad and just rotates it 45 degrees. Sister. Oh my gosh, I know it. I know it, and I don't know the name of it. You're close, Turtle Power. F. Ray. Ray. What is Pump It Up? Yes. Yes! Nice. <laughs> but that makes me think that you were looking at Chad. <laughs> it's what is Pump It Up Exceed? Yes. Nah, nah. He... My man Ray's not cheating. I, I got his uh, back. That's made by Andamiro, makers of Spray Gun. Spray Gun. If if you you didn't play Spray Gun while it was in free play, yeah, you had to shake the the canister and made that rattling yeah. sound. No, I never. Were you never part exterminate of, insects? It's part of Weird Games Week. Weird Weird Games Month. That might have that might have predated your time, Dylan. It, I think it did. All right, Ray, you got the board. Oh man. I guess I only have one option, which is Street Puncher for 800. Often believed to be a bootleg, this game was Check developed lore, by Falcon right? and officially licensed for distribution in Japan due to Nintendo's inability to keep up with demand. Use context clues. Right. Often believed to be a bootleg I'm, of a Nintendo I'm game. <laughs> trying to dive off the board to answer this one. Actually, I don't know. There's only one like but Falcon that I know about. I have a in strong Nintendo, guess. And that's Captain Falcon. <laughs> There's only one Falcon I need. <laughs> All right, beep beep beep. Is it is it Doki Doki Panic Super Mario Two? I uh, know it's what is Crazy Kong. Ah. Yeah, my mind was going towards towards Mario 2 as well, but it didn't seem right. Crazy Kong. All right, Ray. <laughs> how much do you want how, on Castlevania? How much do you like Castlevania? God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get the clip of, uh, of, of Psycho Mantis saying you like to play Castlevania? <laughs> Ah, uh, let's do what a terrible night to have a curse for 2000. Because it's a terrible curse that this is a freaking drop or category. <laughs> there we go. Category. John, John, one of the protagonists of Castlevania Bloodlines, is the son of this character from Bram Stoker's novel, Dracula. I said this on stream when we were still streaming at Free Play Richardson. Mm. John is the son of this character. Mike, you were in the building. What? <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Father of uh, that's not your that's not your buzzer, Ray. Wrong letter. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. What's going on over there? <laughs> I, I, I might actually know this one, and I don't want to say it because I'm so close to Dylan. All close. right, beep beep beep. Uh, is it is it Alucard or Alucard or whatever? No. It is. Who is Quincy Morris? Quincy Morris. It's from the novel. Alucard right. was... <laughs> John Morris is the character from the game. Yeah, most people don't know the, the Bram Stoker novel Dracula is meant to be a part of the Castlevania universe. Yep. Is it? Yep. They, they, they wrote those games to tie specifically into the novel. Well... All right, Ray. Pick more well, answers that uh. There, <laughs> yeah, pick more <laughs> answers that Mike doesn't know the question to, right? Uh, I need more. Like you just did a while ago. 
I need, I need one for Dylan to get wrong. Uh, what Let's go Final Jeopardy. You still, you're still good. Yeah. What, what did you pick? Which I didn't hear your value. Uh, sixteen. Okay. Set in 2036, Dawn of Sorrow is the second game starring Soma Cruz, who is revealed is actually this. Ooh, I know this one. Oh my gosh. Um, you. Dylan. Yeah. Soma Cruz. Who is the next Dracula? That's the world's worst yeah, yeah, game show close ever. close enough. He's the reincarnation of Dracula. What? Okay. I, mean, he's like, I know he's not literally Dracula <laughs> and like the but game. But you didn't say it in the form of a question. I, I love I it. Yes! Said, what is the next Dracula? I well, love you, it. You did? Did he? Did he say? I was. I'm sorry. Did he say? You said. You said. What I said. Is what is the next Dracula? Yeah, I think he did. Okay. I don't know. Oh I'll have to check God. the tape. I'll have to check the tape. But... <laughs> what kind of dog shit is that? All right. <laughs> All right. Chat, chat back. Hey to man, you. I've okay. played the game. Okay. <laughs> All right. Eight hundred or twelve hundred then. Uh, twelve hundred. This is the only Castlevania game developed specifically for the arcade. You need to get this one, Ray, if you want to go well, outside. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's supposed to be Final Jeopardy. There, there is Final Jeopardy. Can, can bet all of his points. <laughs> Excuse me. I can't believe they got that dog shit answer. Like, the next Dracula is not the reincarnation of Dracula. Uh, that is Tiger. incorrect, Dan, to the noobs. Tiger. Tiger. Wait. That's also not your buzzer, Mike. <laughs> doesn't work that way all right i'm gonna make it mike mike yes i mean like it's in the play choice so what is versus castlevania that is incorrect mm. Mm. feel specifically for the arcade developed specifically for the arcade that is just an arcade port of the nes did michael Beltran just muck himself out of final jeopardy he's in negative 200 there's one more question <laughs> left there's one question left all right Beep, beep, beep. DL's got it. It is. What is Haunted Castle? Haunted Castle? Really? Yes. The game is hard as... I'm Gross. Hard as fun. Gonna... Yeah. <laughs> Gross. Mike, you best, really? best jump right. in here. You have to get this one right to make it to Final Jeopardy. Last one. The Castlevania animated series on Netflix was developed and written by this prolific comic book writer. Mike. 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 Who is Simon Belmont? <laughs> that is incorrect. <laughs> Damn it. Tiger. I, would, Tiger. I thought you were going to guess Tiger. Baby Pac Man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Beep, beep, beep. It's who is Warren Ellis? All right. That concludes Double Jeopardy. Tiger. Tiger. Yes. So we have Tiger. Final With... Jeopardy. How are we going to do this? <clears throat> All right. So uh, Ray and Dylan, do you guys have my phone number? I do. Ray? Uh, I have uh... my phone number. Not my, not anything else. No. All right. I'm texting you right now, Ray. Okay. The way it works is they choose their bed amount before they hear the question. Correct. Correct. So... Uh, while we go to commercial break and, and, uh, Josh tells us about writing this and, uh, and, uh, what all effort he put into it and if he's willing to do it again, because this has been fun for me. Um, I want you guys, you got my, my, my text, Ray? I do not. My number is G14. Oh, let's give it out to the whole stream. I will. Hold up. <laughs> this will be on YouTube, so. All right, so it's two one four. We've we've ascertained three, five, that three five six. Yeah, three five six. Five two nine six. Five two nine six. All right. I would think very very hard about pranking me. I'm not pranking you. Like, I'm not. I'm just I'm just telling the stream like. 
I don't have any money, but what I do have is uh, some particular just, stuff. Uh, uh, <laughs> All right, you get my you get my text. Uh, yes. Okay, so uh, now, you guys, the time for, yeah, you guys, the time for uh, go, for Ray to goad Dylan into betting lots. <laughs> right, yeah, you you two, uh, Dylan, you can bet up to seven thousand dollars. Ray, you can bet up to five thousand dollars. Mike. You have been eliminated. So you guys text me your bet now while uh, Josh tells us if he's right, willing to do this again because it's been a blast. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, like, I think it takes. It took me a long time to come up with a question. It, it took me longer to come up with uh, 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 somebody's asking you're supposed to show the category for it first. The oh, my bad, my bad. Show, show the category first or reveal the yeah, category. Yeah, I need the category. The category is free play. Category is free play. All right, Dylan, I want you to text me again your bet. And Ray, text me your bet. Oh, I'm just going to whip it all out there. I'm going to say 5,000. Whoa. Oh, don't even need Whoa. to text it. Oh, just... Don't even need to text it. Hardcore reveal. All right. That's a, that's a, officially speaking, the text is what will be used, by the way. Oh, I can just tell you right now, I text Chris 5,000. All right. We're ready when you are, Josh. Okay. So, here is the final Jeopardy question. I don't have a graphic for it. I'd have to make like a whole board just for one question, which seems silly. Uh, when Free Play first opened, this was the only game on the floor made after the year 2000. All right, Chase, are you still singing? Okay, and you guys, you guys need to text me the answer. Text me the answer, okay? When when free play first opened, this was the only game on the floor made after the year two thousand. Huh. Uh, how long do we have? Uh, Chase, are you in there? Mike B, start humming the 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 uh, the theme. All right. <clears throat> go go. Um. Um. Mm hmm. I'm I'm listening have to you, the song. Have you and ever it's thirty seconds long? So that's how long you have. Have, have you ever seen seconds. Jeopardy, Mike? It's, it's thirty seconds. Do, okay. Do 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 do. No. Do 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 I'm gonna get screwed on this one. Are you are you Boom. texting me? Hold on, wait. I Did you say you. after 2000? Uh, all right. After 2000. I yes. have. Te text it now. That was the end of the song. The, the I big have boom my boom two. All right, you have, have three, two, one. Yeet. Okay. And all right. So we start with Raymond Upshaw. His answer: Marvel versus Capcom two. Josh, and your and his bid. Oh, uh, you, you, you'll bid tell me if it's correct or incorrect I mean, first. That wasn't a joke. I said five thousand. I got it wrong. Oh, that yeah. that it's is still, incorrect. Yeah, that is incorrect. Thousand. And how much did you bet, Ray? Five thousand dollars, down to zero, which is still better than Michael Beltran. Hmm. That's all I needed. All right, on to <laughs> Dylan. He was first place, seven thousand dollars. What was your answer? Also, Marvel versus Capcom two. <laughs> <laughs> but I only wagered thirty one hundred. <laughs> you indeed did bet thirty one hundred dollars, which means our champion at thirty nine hundred points. Surprise, surprise is one Dylan Smith. What was the answer, Josh? Was it uh was it Virtua Hello? Fighter four? No, I can tell all of chat that they are all wrong. I saw some battle. Oh, oil. oh, oh! Give me. Did not wait, is it? Was it? Uh, later. sorry. Was it? Uh, outrun two. Correct. Yeah. It was outrun two. Outrun two. Well, I wasn't around at the time, so hey. total total Tiger. nuclear annihilation came much later. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, congratulations to our new champion, Dylan Smith. You will be returning. If you, you haven't hit the five show limit yet. 
and we will have two more contestants the next time we can go Josh into writing up two more boards of arcade free play arcade Jeopardy. Thank you. Yes, it was so 2003. Much. You thought Outrun 2 was gone when we first opened. Uh, the question was when we first opened, yes. which was the one on the floor that was made uh, after the year 2000. Yeah. I yeah, I, I can confirm. I was there. I thought Dylan had 7,000. He did, but he lost. He he, 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 he said MVC2 for his answer, and he bid 3,100. Oh, I didn't hear that part. Okay. Yeah, I figured Dylan was going to be a Jake and only wager 2,000. And if I <laughs> like 4,999 to 5,000. So I just hung it out there with all of it. It was a good so, match. Hello. Hello, hello. So uh, joining us now is Dr. Angela Beard, a.k.a. Gory Midori, our sponsor for today. Have you been listening, watching? Do we have a winner yet, or is this we just do? a round? So we do have a winner. Now, Dylan Smith, uh, roll tier in the, in the nationwide audience. You were the winner there because you picked Dylan as your horse. But locally, who could actually benefit from this it'll be jay pong jonathan kim the pong world champion himself that's that's your winner of the prize cool congratulations and we will invite um, jonathan kim to play as well next time yeah the winner needs to just um pick a local well, okay so there are national players that what's that so we got a local and well, so I, I, I figured that the, the the local players would be the only ones that could benefit because I know you were trying to benefit two local businesses. Um, yeah. Yeah, so so I made sure that we had a <coughs> local champion local. who could win. So so only the wow. honor, the honor and prestige goes to Roll Tier nationwide. However, Jonathan Kim is your, your prize winner. And uh, right least there. of all is, of course, the ah. exiting Michael Beltran. I see. Okay. So yeah, I will, um, I don't know what the easiest way to do this is. I didn't think it through, but I will for, um, somebody and, um, why don't I just message you two like, on uh, Facebook and you guys can talk it out. Cool. Cool. Congrats, Jonathan. Love you. Congrats, Jonathan. <laughs> All right, so... Sorry, I'm eating. That's all good. Um, why don't, uh, why don't uh, you guys have your victory speeches? I need to use the restroom real quick, and then we'll come back and talk more with Gory Midori, Dr. Angela Beard. If anybody has questions, she checks in with us every day this time, 6.30. And, uh, yeah, start lining them up. Um, Be right back. Mike, I'm gonna need you to change your your, your name from Mike B underscore twenty three to like Mike, Mike B, B underscore negative one thousand. Yeah, like we <laughs> got a disrespect to the number twenty three. What is threeve? Threeve. Shuck it, Trebek. <laughs> well, if we're doing victory speeches, I prefer victory screeches. Just not gonna make noise. I will silently screech in victory. So uh, what happened? I, I had to go won. get my mail real quick. I would have won get, if it was go a get your meal. No it mail. Edit. So what's up? Uh, what's going on? Oh, you know, just what chilling happened? in my pajamas, in, jamming in my jammies. Oh, okay. Hey. Hold on, I just got a pull the screen back here. up here. Our box is telling me that I really uh, shit the bed there. <laughs> I really the bed. It's just Dylan got that tactical question ahead of me, and when and I also just barely skirted by on the Castlevania answer. Oh man, <laughs> that screwed this whole entire thing. I mean, I'm not. I wasn't really wrong. <laughs> you should, Ray, Ray, you should have gotten those out of the way early. You you took it the wrong way. You were gonna have to get them eventually anyway. Look. Dylan was supposed to screw those up, and then you all decided to get, cast favoritism on the number one 
player in a brief way there. I cast level two favoritism on number one Hall of Famer. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want me to say a little bit about the Jeopardy and future Jeopardy yeah. stuff if now, you have, or do we want to do that later? And schedule. I mean, yeah, look, we could talk it out right now. What, what, what are you thinking? So, I mean. I was, so like I was saying, the hardest thing was less, it was actually less the questions and we're coming up with good categories. Uh -huh. um, but once I had those, it, w it was a little easier to do the questions. Uh, but I was thinking during it, if we did more like, I would definitely be okay with doing it like if it was once a week yeah yeah <laughs> we could do more, doing I, more that that would be like really difficult i think yeah i think once a week is 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 the way to go if you're into it and we kind of have a time slot at 4 30 and monday if you're if you're feeling up to it stream, stream chat all right with that um yeah and there was also somebody was discussing doing crowdsourced questions i mean we could try that but i think the problem with that is that like you kind of end up all over the place as sort of as far as like voice. Yeah, I think I think you did a good those. job writing those. They uh, were very on brand. Uh, I certainly will take. I could take suggestions I, for categories, and I could take. I'll, uh, I'll give you like, a suggestion since it's free play arcade. Uh, why don't you do potent potables and start asking craft beer questions? And it, if you don't know, you can consult with Zach Johnson or or Mike Blomgren or anybody like yeah. that. Uh, and it, I will also take like any feedback on, like obviously I think we should avoid number questions. <laughs> like even when I wrote that one, it was like, yeah. Yeah, uh, the number questions can be tricky, but, but I, I think you did a good job. But uh, uh, and also avoid like the funniness of answers when somebody says the next Dracula and it says the reincarnation of Dracula because that's two different things. Yeah, with Jeopardy, they always, you know, he he turns to the judges and is like. Is that good enough answer? You know that sort of thing. So yeah, I kind of functioned uh, in that way this, if, this time. If I if I like shared the doc with Chris, he could see the answers and and I could confer with him. If he I mean, that, that works if you want to if you want to get really technical tiger, about that question, tiger, tiger. I'm not gonna. Uh, I mean, that was totally technical. The next rebirth of a soul in a new body is, is the definition of reincarnation. So yeah, yeah, I, I, I felt if I was judging that, I definitely would have given it to you, uh, Dylan. I uh, did, but, yes. I, but I also did cast level two, level two favoritism. I, I, I do have to admit. Uh, yes, of course. Yeah, that was my, my trap card. I had it waiting the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing exactly. I was thinking is that like this one, I wanted to keep it video game related, but certainly in future ones, we could do other stuff. We could do like 80s cartoons and things like that. Uh, expanded a little more beyond video games for future jeopardies if that's something people would be interested in. Yeah, I, th I think that's fantastic. I think that's very, very on brand with uh, free play arcade. We so. could also try other game show formats. I don't know about that or if you want to stick with Jeopardy. Uh, hard to, to, I mean, as much as I would like to have Michael Beltran on uh, Arcade Family Feud, I don't know how I could survey a hundred people. <laughs> Uh, yeah, our chat isn't big enough for that. <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, yeah, I mean, sticking with Jeopardy probably is easier. Yeah, let's let's do Jeopardy. Somebody, somebody in chat keeps saying millionaire, but then you only have one contestant. Yeah, and it and it yeah. goes really weird, like like long form, and yeah. Yeah. So but, yeah, we we can do that. Have yeah. Plus, I like this yeah. presentation. This is this is very yeah. convenient. And, yeah, and, and I and I paid. You have to cast level three favoritism, and, and that's I also really uh, already paid twenty dollars for this, so <laughs> <laughs> it was it was free to use, but they only had five columns for board, per board, and to add another column, you had to sign up for the thing, which cost twenty dollars. It was twenty dollars lifetime, so I'm not paying any more, but still, it was like mean of them to be like, you only get five columns when it normally has six. So weird. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for taking one for the team, Josh. It was uh... a. <laughs> I, I was sitting. I was sitting there thinking, is it okay for me to charge this to the free play credit card? I don't even know <laughs> if it's possible. I don't know. I did my own. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Josh, next week I'm gonna need you to have a Tiger King category. <laughs> Tiger. Oh, Tiger, Tiger King. King. I haven't even watched it yet. I I, I, right. I do I do feel like a Tiger King category would be timely since we're all stuck watching stuff. But whatever 80s movie or cartoon or whatever, it's all good. Yeah. I trust your, I trust your writing instincts there, Josh.
Like, yeah. I'm just saying, I know our box was disappointed in me. Like, I would have won if it wasn't for that Carol Baskins. Yeah. And, and I, will, I will say that I felt the Castlevania category was a little Tiger. out of place because it was not as Tiger. broad as the others. But I thought Castlevania was a big enough. So it, it's hard to figure out. It's hard to know how much knowledge other people have, right? Mm. So. Mm. All right. If uh, Angela is with me, I'm, I'll try and do a video call. Do you want to do video call or do you want to just talk over the voice chat, Angela? I don't think she's here. Oh, my bad. Uh, and we probably want to switch the stream back to you also. Yeah, I suppose. Bye, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> You, you can there. suck it, Trebek. We'll <laughs> see you suck. next week. Shuck it, Cornbeck. Yeah, we'll go, we're gonna invite Jonathan Kim to be one of the contestants next week for sure. Yes, that would be excellent. And I am not Ray Upshaw. Oh, you're welcome, Ricky Box. Oh no, J Kim. Says, says he only no. plays Pong, not Jeopardy. All right, okay. I guess we have to find two other contestants. There was a Pong question, Jacob. I know, there's a Pong question. <laughs> Surely you knew that one. <laughs> oh. I jumped the spots. Never Pong mind. claw. All right. I'm out for now. I'll check in later. Have a good night, Mike. Good job, Mike. Suck a Trebek. <laughs> <laughs> Angel, you want to do this on uh, video, or do you want to just talk? Yeah, I've been waiting for Hello, hello? Nope. Yeah. Uh, I've been I've been in the call. Okay, waiting for the call. Alright, we're All gonna right. switch Thanks. this over, see if that works. It knocks me temporarily out of the voice chat. Hello, hello. Now oh, we are joined by Gory Midori. There he comes. Hello, hello. Um, see if my my scene works still. That's not me. Well, it totally is me, but. Whoa. Might need the producer to jump in. That's not it either. Hey, uh, Jared, do you mind taking me over and adding that call screen again? I feel like, there we go. Hold on, I got it. Yes, I got it. Maybe. Just have to figure out what to turn off now. Nope. Nope. I can see you. They just can't see you. There it is. All right, you ready? Mm-hmm. Pushing live Hi, everybody. Now. I'm eating. <laughs> yes, yes. Joining us now, uh, clinical psychologist, Dallas Derby Devil of, of your... Commentator, our uh, rep. Hungry girl. Hungry girl, killer queen champion, uh, uh, Gory Midori. How are you today? I'm good. Um, today was back to work. It's Monday. So I uh, just put in a full day at the office, the clinic. Saw a few patients virtually, which is how most of us are doing our work at this point. Um, I know you're going to ask me, so let me, you know, introduction, um, I'm Angela LeBeard, I'm a clinical psychologist who works at a local hospital, I work in the outpatient clinic, and I'm still reporting to the clinic, as, again, a lot of rumblings about, about being able to telework, but as of now, how's your day been, Chris? Uh, pretty good, I very much enjoyed, there we go, that, there's me, I, I very much enjoyed the, the Free Play Arcade Jeopardy! 
Um, I got to. It's it's been a nerdy fun day because uh, I got to do a a really complex. Um, I'm not sure how to. Uh, let me hit the, there we go. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I got to talk to Cuddlecore, who is kind of a, a personal hero of mine, even though she's much much younger than me. Uh, a a woman who has been successfully uh, doing the the Tekken Seven Pro tour for uh, about. Six years, she said, something like that. She's been what? getting more and more into it. Years. What was that? What kind of tour lasts six years? Well, so the 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 it's not one single tour. The the Tekken Pro Tour, um, there's a there's a professional tour um, sponsored by Namco that is just Tekken and Tekken Seven specifically. Um, so she's a professional Tekken player. And uh, she's, I've met her in Canada, in Chicago, um, in Florida. Uh, just every time I go to a major of any type, um, I end up running into uh, to Cuddlecore. That's uh, Equinox Color Cuddlecore. i got to get her, her sponsor in there as well. It's her team name. Um, and, yeah, we got to talk to her for about an hour and a half, and she, it was, she was willing to answer any and every question. And, uh, you know, she's always been, or, you know, since I've known her, she's been a personal hero anyway. Um, sort of defying all expectations and all all different variety, and she will whoop up on an international Tekken player, which is a an inspiration for sure. Cool. So fun day, hanging out and catching up with her. Yes, and then we did Arcade Jeopardy, and thank you for the prize and and kind of enabling us. Like, it was really motivated us to get it going, and and <laughs> that was that was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I came in on the tail end of it. I actually just got home from work, so um, just so, the fun part. Although, well, I guess arguably all of it was fun. Was it all free play and video game trivia? Were there other categories? There were there were many categories. It was uh, it was arcade and a lot of video game trivia. It was ma mainly video game trivia. He's going to. Josh said he'd do it again next week, so uh, we'll do it next Monday at four thirty p.m. as well, and awesome. uh, have. Uh, two or three new uh, new contestants, depending on if Dylan can actually be here. Um, I know, you know, everybody's situation is week to week or day to day, really. But overall, just a lot of fun. So I was super happy about that, and really happy to be able to talk to to um, to Cuddlecore as well. So it was, and and, and just put her in front of everybody, because uh, you know I've gotten to go out to different majors and meet her, and uh, that was that was meaningful for me it's always been uh really cool to have her in my rolodex awesome sorry i tried to grab delilah but she just ran away she might come back in a minute yeah delilah is not a human if uh if anybody has any questions they want to they want to get a, a quick word in with a clinical psychologist she cannot be your therapist no but no, but she can perhaps give you a, a little bit more um of a of a of a guide of where to go to get your questions answered in a therapeutic way if that's what you needed or just ask her about um derby terms and whatnot <laughs> just be careful that, some of them derby. are quite risque um boat guy wants to know how was your weekend uh my weekend was pretty good uh so let me see so um, I made Matt watch Baby Driver last night because I really like that movie. I was actually best soundtrack of the last decade. Yeah, no, it was a great movie, great syncing. Uh, I didn't it win an Oscar for music editing? It should have. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, um, I was thinking I should do like a bonus round or something about movies because I don't, you know, I know f all about video games, but I do anyway. So. We watched Baby Driver last night. Um, we went for a long walk. Uh, we walked from my place down to the Royal Blue Grocery in downtown Dallas, which was actually nice because I hadn't been out in the city, you know, like the actual urban part uh, for a while. So it kind of semi-normal. Uh, we sat in the park. Uh, what else did we do? I did a lot of cooking, which I do every weekend at this point. I'm like the homesteader now. Um, oh geez. Uh, oh, I did some plumbing too. So like, I bought two bidets and I installed them at his place and my place. So how? TMI. I have a bidet now. 
long. Do you, do you have the so is it is it like the full like Japanese toilet that I experienced when I was out in Japan where you sit down and everything and you just hit the button? Yeah, so it's it's everything but the actual toilet like it's you know it's after factory obviously because i can't i'm not gonna rip the toilet out of my apartment okay but yeah it's like the seat that has the controls and it plugs into an electric uh source and um the water that and um, like i was so there's like some very inexpensive ones that will not electric and they don't warm up and then there's some you know, as everybody knows, there's like the really, really high end one, you know, like a thousand plus dollars. And I was looking for some compromise that um, also wasn't on back order until May. So I found something and I snatched up to you and now they're already sold out. Yeah, they're great. You don't have to, to deal with um, toilet paper lines or no yeah, toilet I don't paper. Get involved. I don't want to get killed in a to toilet paper riot. Right. I mean, I just don't want to go that way. Well, and also, like, you just feel more clean afterwards, and they're, honestly, I couldn't recommend it more. I had never, um, never really experienced anything quite like that before I took my trip to Japan, and Man, that was, like, the number the, one thing. It's just, like... He's going crazy about this news. They... Yes. Yeah. No, we're... <laughs> basically, it's, it's, a, it's a line of demarcation. If you've been to Japan, you know how great it is, and, uh, and that's just the end of that. Like, you just, you just, you feel dirty. If you if you experience that and then you go back to the other way and you're and you're using paper toilet paper products, like yeah yeah well, it just, just seemed like a good time because I had you know I have time in my hands uh there apparently you know, plumbing on prowess the on the yeah all right two two questions how much did it end up going if you don't mind me asking um so, so the ones that I got were two hundred fifty dollars um which I'm I mean, it, it feels about, like, feel, <laughs> not going into that much TMI, but it looks about like a washlet. The only things that are missing are it does not blow dry, and it does not play you a song, and it does not play you nice, gentle waterfall noises to, to coax you into performing. So, <laughs> well, that's why we all have Michael Beltran Skyped into our bathrooms. <laughs> that's right. um, <laughs> yeah, who needs that? My second question, how hard was it to get it hooked up to power? I know there's like code issues in some cities, if not all of them, regarding power in your bathroom. No, it's fine. I mean, I don't, so so at Matt's place, there's an outlet very close to the toilet um, that he uses for his, um, and then at my place, I don't have an outlet nearby, but it's just a matter of um, an extension cord kind of run under the door, so it's not, and then, um, I felt very clever, which, which, okay, so I felt very clever when I installed it, and then Matt pointed out that it wasn't that clever, because all you have to do is just read, but I felt very clever before I bought it, because I um, was reading all the reviews, and everybody <clears throat> was saying, you need to go to Home Depot and buy this special adapter, because the kit, as it comes, does not work, and then... I found like this one review mixed in amongst all those that was like, no, 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 no. Like you need, you have everything you need in this kit. It's just that everybody's trying to attach this to the wall when they have to attach it to the t I was like, oh, I did my research. Like I'm going to circum, I'm wasted trip to Home Depot. And then Matt was like, yeah, it's right here in the directions. Those people are just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Rockman EXE whom I know to be from New York City right now, uh, says, can she be my therapist? <laughs> I cannot for multiple reasons. So one, technically, I guess, it, you know what? If it's just like people at large I, and not people that I'm friends with, I guess I could technically have a client who, you know, I met through like the arcade or whatever and mm -hmm. also friends with them. But I also at... Um, a facility that, that um, caters to a specific population. So I'm not a private practitioner. You can't just like come to my office and ask to be a patient. So I'm sorry to disappoint, but no. Okay. <laughs> um, how is everybody else doing? I want to hear updates from people. How's your mental health holding up? Uh, we're kind of in in kind of a plateau. You know, if you if you do want to hear from people specifically, I could I could drop you out into the voice chat for a little bit. 
Um, and that, that might do the trick because the, the webcam webcam is a call like there's a call between you and me. So they can't they can't chime in and, and say with their with their voice. So if you don't mind um, going off the stream for a bit, we can we can solicit people to actually call in. Okay, we can try. Uh, Rockman, so I am sending you all the positive best of luck to you with that. Yeah, I think I think your your um I think Angela's audio will be better if we do it that way anyway, so it's all good. I just need to go here and then jump in there. There we go. Okay, so the request lines are open. Uh, if you want to talk to Gory Midori, can you can you hear me, Angela? Yeah. Okay, I think your I bandwidth you. is going to support it better for at least the audio to uh, to do it this way anyway. So because you you tend to to go in and out on the webcam. I see. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Pirietti says I'm busy with work. That's how I'm feeling. I know that feel, bro. Or just. I, I say that, and then and then it cuts out anyway. So I'm not sure. I need to run over a tech team to your house to spruce it um, up. So you're breaking up pretty badly too right now. Oh. Hello, hello. Yeah, I I don't know yeah. where the the connection's. Pr it's probably honestly like I I don't want to. It's probably on your end because mine is is super crazy high end. Uh, maybe it's on Wi-Fi and 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 you can plug it in. Uh, although I'm not too concerned about it right now at this point because we can fight through. Just working on it as we go along. Uh, yeah. Anybody who has questions for Goya Midori or wants to respond to her, come in and tell tell us how you're doing. Then roll on into the special guests on stream. And I want to turn that scene off. It just takes a sec. Right. That's me. Can't do that. I hear music? You do hear music a little bit. Eh, just hit that one. Those of you who are listening, I haven't talked for the last several, for like the last ninety seconds, so you're not missing anything. Don't worry. Yeah, gotcha. Um, how about now? Uh, got her laptop plugged into wired connection. I'll oh, get her laptop plugged into a wired connection. Yeah, they're saying if you can plug yeah. it in. It'll 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 happen. clean up. I, yeah, my um, my modem is in my closet, so. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Pure Yeti says he's busy with work. That's how he's feeling. That sounds like a good. If it's work, work where you're getting paid for that work, Pure Yeti, then I I think that's pretty cool because we are all kind of laid off. I will say, um, I heard. We haven't talked since the weekend, so I heard from Kelsey um, after the stimulus package or whatever it is that got passed through Congress and the House and was signed into law uh, recently. Um, the owners of Freeplay were discussing it, and they it was the first time I've heard them be optimistic in some time. So uh, all of our efforts hopefully will be paying off, and we can get Freeplay back open secondarily. I wouldn't mind having a job again. That sounds awesome. I'm not sure if that means I'll work less because I definitely work more now that I'm unemployed. So that was kind of nice. Yeah. yeah, that was um, that was promising. I was seeing a lot of um, confusion what exactly the terms were, so I did my research. So, I mean, if, if it's okay to talk about what the, um, what the social distance uh, regulations are right now. I guess it's okay to talk about this stuff just to keep people informed. No yeah, no, I, I, I think so. Like, like uh, the, the law is passed. Uh, it impacts us all greatly. Uh, we're talking about the stimulus package, right? So, um, so the, the package that got passed allows a $1,200 uh, direct deposit for everybody... Uh, who makes less than $99,000 a year, um, although $75,000 a year or more, I, 
I think it decreases every, uh, it decreases by $5 in some sort of increments. If you're making more than $99,000, then you're super lucky. Um, and you won't be getting anything. But yeah, for everybody below the $75,000 a year threshold, you should be getting a $1,200 stimulus check. I did a little bit of research and apparently they are going to direct deposit it into whatever account you had designated for your last tax return. And if you didn't designate a direct deposit account, they're just going to have to mail it to you. Okay. Um, anybody that's going, anybody that went through something where you know like if their if their most recent tax return had an account that's now closed or they went through a divorce or something like that you might want to double check on that and make sure it goes into the correct i believe where i stand is uh i was going to file my tax return and then the world ended so i haven't filed one this year i filed one last year i believe i lived at a different address however i do have the same bank account as i have since i was a teenager and mm -hmm. Bully Mania says it's agi.net that is determining on the, uh, so was that adjusted oh, gross okay. income? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, adjusted, okay. That's interesting. Line 8B. Wow, we got a, we got an account? Uh, let's see, Bully Mania works in a, there you go. Bully Mania works in um, hospital acquiring. He's in, he's in the New Jersey area, acquiring materials for uh, the hospital. And of course, his job is super super important right now. I'm really glad that we got off the video chat because um, now you can't see me eating QP mayonnaise. Straight. Yeah, that's probably probably possibly for the best, depending on how much mayonnaise you painted your face with. Can I hear a sh can I hear some love for QP mayonnaise? Those of you in the know. I don't. I don't actually know. I'm not in the know. I wish I. Do, I wish I was now. It's Japanese, first of all, so you automatically love it. <laughs> it's the best mayonnaise in the world. It's got MSG in it. MSG is delicious. I recently found out that that whole thing about Chinese restaurant syndrome is considered like racist. Um, that, um, that it's a, I don't, I don't know if it's just like a very controversial diagnosis or if they've verified that it's not really a diagnosis at all. I'm sure that, you know, would dispute anything, uh, related to like health, but, um. What diagnosis? But yeah, uh, um, MSG allergy or MSG poisoning. I th think it's MSG poisoning. So, th so they, but they don't think that's a thing? Yeah, they don't think it's a thing. Although, I mean, that's the thing. There are corporate interests. So Ajinomoto, which is like seasoning company or food company, mm -hmm. um, they're the makers of QP mayonnaise. They basically invented the synthetic version of MSG, which occurs naturally in certain foods. It's a big component of the umami thing. Um, and so like maybe, I don't know, maybe Ajinomoto like paid off some scientists to declare that it was imaginary. Who knows? It's very nefarious out there. Yeah. Um. No love, no love for QP mayonnaise. That makes me sad. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's see. Austin Tex says Austin Tex says it, it is awesome. So okay. you definitely had some love. And uh, lump sum just wants to throw out an entire like of all mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> now yes, I'm just confused. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. You got. You got it. Take it. Um, MSG does occur naturally in, I think, kombu, which is a type of seaweed, and some mushrooms, like shiitake mushrooms, and probably, um, I th think it's a naturally occurring compound in, uh, proteins, which is why you get that kind of savory flavor, or, like, cooked proteins. Um, um, but yeah, so Austin, Texas, right, they, they put this mayonnaise on pizza, on burgers, on sushi, on takoyaki. They put it everywhere because it is. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask you. You're kind of fading in and out, so if you're still talking, I'm sorry. Um, let's see. I wanted to ask for uh, just general kind of mental health while we're cooped up at home. Um, I, I know I've heard this a few times. I've heard it from, from you earlier last week. And I, I've heard it. I've heard the same kind of thoughts 
passed along to uh, different friends that I have that I've interacted with who have therapists who've told them the same thing. But do you have some general guidelines of how to stay motivated, upbeat, maybe on your sleep schedule during this time when we're all pinned in our house? If I have uh, Angela with me. Oh, she's out. She's uh she's having an extra extra oh, bite of the the mayo. There you are. You're unmuted now. Okay, sorry. Did I was muted and I forgot. Yeah, um, did you hear the question? Yeah, so it's been a, it's been a few days since we talked about this, so I think it's a good time to reiterate that routine is your friend right now. Routine is a really valuable tool to be using right now, and you can actually combine that with social connecting by um, maybe like asking somebody to be your but not necessarily for exercise, which a lot of people do, um, exercise or diet. I mean, you can use it for that. I think that's what a lot of people are familiar with as far as accountability buddies. But just for like, um, you know, just for checking in with each other on your mental health, just for um, reminding each other, hey, hey, it's probably time to get some rest. It's probably time to go to bed, even though you want to just like scroll and scroll till 3 a.m. Or, um, um, Hey, you know, we both agreed to get some fresh air um, sometime before noon today, so it's time to do that. So I think that's really helpful, even if you don't enlist a friend into, well, you know, let me back up. Even, um, you don't even, it doesn't even have to be a friend. You can, whatever online community you have or whatever virtual community you have, if you're on a group chat or if you are, you know, posting with each other on the free play Facebook page, whatever it is, um, you know, try to support each other, try to give each other those healthy reminders. But even if you don't want to go that far, just laying out a routine for yourself. And I highly recommend writing it down somewhere like in an app or on your phone notes or on paper if you're you know if you're the type of person who learns better by writing things down or who learns better by you know posting something up where you can see it in your home i would highly recommend like writing out what your daily schedule is going to be like so that you have some semblance of structure otherwise yeah it's very easy to start going mad from this and um I, I can uh, turn no further than to the movie starring Hugh as... Wait, wait, a movie? The... Sorry, turn to what movie? About a boy. I'm being kind of tongue-in-cheek right now. But, oh, sorry, you were, uh, you're just breaking up, that's all. A movie about a boy. Uh, yeah, so about a boy, Hugh Grant plays this, um, basically a trust fund kid who's rich because his father wrote the most popular Christmas song ever. And so he has never had a job, so he has to figure out ways to, uh, you know, use up his day every day. And so he said, he he gives this whole monologue about how he thinks of a day as being made up of a number of units. And so he like uses his units for you know getting a haircut or having lunch or cleaning his kitchen or whatever. So some might call them up. hours. Sorry, what? I said some might call them hours, those units that, that a day are broken into. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, hours. So his units were 30 minutes, but mm -hmm. yeah, same thing. Um, and and yeah, that thing's feeling, you know, somewhat structured, somewhat real. It keeps that uh, um, circadian drift from getting too far out of hand. Yeah, and I know I, I, I know several of us and, and many people across the land right now are, are suffering from that. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm gonna put a picture of you and Bud up next to next to the screen. Hope you don't mind. No, not at all. Okay. Oh. You, you look great. I, I at least I think you look great. So I uh it was it was it was the dress you were wearing today that uh you explained Derby d Devils or sorry, roller derby to me in the audience. So you, you were Oh the galaxy Yes. Jump, the yes. galaxy mm -hmm. Oh, I love that book. Um, now it says a haiku a day. I've uh, been working on poems. Ah, Andy's been working on poems to keep his mind sane. Uh, I have That's been. That's an awesome uh, idea. Yeah, I have been streaming yes. into infinity, and that that keeps me. That definitely keeps my schedule together. 
even if it is a, a bit There's much. A Aww. Good times. Um, let's see. What? Well, yeah, what else am I doing? Um, I'm probably going to start sending postcards to people again because I was doing that last year. Last year? Um, so if there's a mailing address out here, I'll send you a postcard. I um, Now, if... if um, as far as like you, you were talking about using an entire like online community to, to help like facilitate keeping your schedule. Um, like I, obviously I'm streaming from, from noon till 10, which is an insane schedule, but does involve a schedule. And I know, uh, some of the people who've been watching have said that like, that's the only thing keeping them tied to a daily routine. Um, but I can also, um, I don't know. I could, I could post like, I, you know, you know, honestly, if I if I stayed with it and posted at at 10 a.m. that I'm gonna walk around the block in the in the Discord uh, before we actually go live, then uh, then maybe uh, people can walk with me and I, I can I can aid us in, in getting out and about um, that way. So I would be happy to if if I anybody think, wants to go on a daily walk with me at 10 a.m. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a beautiful idea, and I mean, uh, yeah, like kind of giving people a little bit of heads up so that they know like, Oh, right, right. It's time to do that. And then being able to like celebrate with each other. Like those of you who actually like stuck with it and accomplished it. Cool. And it's funny cause it's the small thing is right now. Right. Chris, like mm -hmm. you, this seems like such a frivolous thing to be spending time on, uh, a month ago, but now this could, uh, um, a significant, you know, like an, a significant enhancement to your mind. To enhance what's that? Oh, I said an enhancement to people's mornings. Yes. Um, yeah. No, and I'm willing. And plus, it's nice out there. It's spring. You know. The only downside is it makes me sneeze on occasion when everybody's mowing their lawn because they got nothing else to do, and then everybody thinks I have the plague. But there's a song by, I think it's by the Luxmiths called T-shirt Weather, and there's a line that says, "I sneezed when I looked into the sun today." So every time you mention that, it reminds. <laughs> yeah, I um should I um should I maybe like log off and log back on and see if that improves the connection because I think both of us are dropping and like you're dropping out really badly with me and apparently I'm dropping out pretty badly with you guys too. Um do you have do you have a smartphone? I do. Um you could try it this way. Um I don't know if you have Discord on your your smartphone. I do because it was the, that the other day I had um Okay, this is this is what I would do. I would go, I would drop out, go onto Discord on your smartphone, and then activate that voice channel, and then literally put it up to your 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 head like you're talking into a telephone at that point, point. and that that should be pretty stable. So, <coughs> we'll hear back from her again in just a sec. Are you already there? Is that is that it? Okay, I'm here. Hey, you sound crystal clear. How do I sound? Oh, that's nice. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you sound good, and I don't even have to hold my phone up. It's just on the speaker. Perfect. Okay, so um, Noun is, is bummed that, that he missed Cuddlecore and Jeopardy. Don't worry, we'll clip the shows and make sure it gets back out there. Um, you know, it was fun content, so you don't have to worry that you missed it. Although, you did miss competing in it, so congrats to J. Kim yes. and... Uh, and also Dylan Smith for winning. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy to help with. Until... Yeah, ha happy to help with the with the 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 walking. Um, it probably will be motivating to me as well to get out and walk. I am still keeping up with my exercise. So again, my plan to come out prison strong will. Uh, it's working so far. I do actually feel physically better than I've felt in a long time because free play provided free lunches um to all the office employees but it was not necessarily a, a chicken salad a day so i'm my eating is more in line with the caloric intake that i might like and then every morning before as i'm show prepping i'm doing my exercise so it's worked out for me um why do you, why let me ask you this why is it important to keep your sleep schedule without we why is it why why do we even care if we wake up at 4 30 p.m um, well, because so so not every person is like this. Some people do um, 
do genuinely function better, like in all ways, in all domains, they function better on kind of a reverse schedule. But I'll be, I'll be honest, mo that that's really rare. It's usually like a circadian, I don't know if you call it a disorder because it all depends on, you know, whether their lifestyle can accommodate that. But it's a circadian condition that a lot, most people don't have. So even if, you know, people who say, oh, I'm a night owl or, you know, oh, I love napping during the day or whatever, it, it wouldn't necessarily be just that. Um, but for most people, like human beings generally are diurnal, you know, they, uh, they're active during the day and they sleep at night. There are, um, hormones that control, um, our sleeping patterns, our eating patterns, our, you know, energy levels and things like that. And so when we start to drift away from those, it can cause stress on us physically. Um, and also because of the way our society is designed, a lot of these things are working against a diurnal sleep schedule or excuse me um like if you're trying you know if you're starting to go to sleep later and later and wake up later and later then it's like you're for example the time you have to go grocery shopping is going to shrink right mm -hmm. because the grocery stores um most of them close at a certain time and so you know like next thing you know you're waking up at 5 p.m and it's like oh i only have three hours to like get up and moving and da 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 um and um yeah and then also it just you know i think almost all organisms i think almost all animals and uh including humans uh respond well to structure just because it makes um the way i think about it is it cuts down on the level of energy needed to keep the momentum going you know mm. and everybody's experienced that you know like anytime you have momentum going whether it's like going to a job or exercising or you know eating at a certain time of day or whatever it's it's just simply cognitively easier and i would argue in some ways physiologically easier to just keep the momentum going when there's a routine and when there's not a routine all of a sudden everything becomes a decision um and uh yeah it just it just can can complicate things and can have effects on us physiologically as well as mentally so i'm not trying to like demonize um being a night owl or staying up late or sleeping late or whatever i don't i don't mean for it to come across that way but if we're just talking about the vast majority of the population um we just tend to function better physically and cognitively mentally emotionally when we're in a routine and our our natural routine for 99.99 percent .99 of us is to be um diurnal yeah i i for me personally i i like to get up in the morning well I like to get up in the morning on my own terms. I suppose I don't. No one likes the alarm going off, and unless well, <laughs> right. throwing it through the window is kind of fun and cathartic. But when it actually goes off, that's not cool. But if I wake up in the morning, when I, and I would wake up in the morning, um, and then I usually have this is this is a pre. I'm streaming all the time, sort of thing. But go into the office, do some work, uh, leave at around one thirty-two, which was a which was a I guess a luxury slash necessity of my job. I would go and, and take a nap for thirty minutes, hour and a half, however long I could. Um, wake back up, and then I would go to what I was always calling you know my second or third day of my job, uh, where I would go out to free play whatever, and end up staying until close, sometimes till two in the morning. But if I didn't do that, I I. I if I didn't take that nap, my mental acuity would just go completely away. And then when I'm competing or attempting to compete at a high level at a game, my my I just I don't have reactions. Everything feels weird. I feel sluggish. So I, I was a napper or have been a napper. Yeah, yeah, and that's part of that's part of how you know whatever your routines are, right? That's going to mm -hmm. be um, that's going to be something important to pay attention to. Uh, I mean, I'll just say, speaking for myself, I used to work a retail job for years um, and I would, you know, sometimes I had opening shifts and sometimes I had closing shifts. So on the closing shifts, you know, I'd be like, oh, sweet, you know, I don't have to be at work until 2 p.m. I can sleep until noon and I'm still golden. And it took several years and just kind of, you know, um, like getting to the point where my self-awareness was actually working in my favor, <laughs> uh, developing self-awareness, period. Uh, for me to realize that um, as as luxurious as it feels to just like lay in the sheets until noon, mm -hmm. um, if I took the sum total of my experiences, it just did not feel as productive, which then made me feel less good about myself, you know? And it's not like I'm some sort of 
I'm not a triathlete or whatever. I, I don't ha I don't do, I'm not a type A, like, you know, go getter type of person generally. But, um, like if like for one or two days, it's great. But if, if my routine was to like wake up at noon and then just like roll out of bed and go to work and then, you know, stay up late, um, kind of goofing off and then, you know, go to bed late. Like it just, days would get away from me, you know, days would blur together. Days would get away from me. Errands would just kind of start slipping, mm -hmm. um, like socializing would kind of start falling off the radar because my time wasn't synced up with other people. And over time, I just realized that it just felt like I was wasting so many days, which were turning into weeks. And um, even though it was painful at the beginning to start waking up as early as I do now, um, I realized that it's like I would get things done before noon and I still had the rest of the day to enjoy, you know, enjoy myself or relax or whatever. And it just worked out better for me. And I think a lot of people kind of realize that the hard way, the same way I did, you know, like kind of going through it and realizing, wow, I feel like a... I feel like a lump of dough right now, and I can't say I've done anything for the past month. Yeah, yeah, I, I tend to want to. Get, I want to get as much sleep as I can, and then I'll I'll wake up, you know, as far as be, feeling unproductive with your with your time usage. When I when I wake up naturally, and then I'm still tired, or I feel tired, perceive I'm tired, and I want to go back to sleep, or I want to roll over and bundle up again and just fall back asleep. It never really happens for me. I'm just not. Uh, not to say that I can't fall back asleep if I wake up at two in the morning. Just uh, if I wake up and it's daylight outside, and you know I'm kind of a little bit awake and I want to fight back asleep, I don't get to fight back asleep. And then you know I spend the next hour or however long I spend in the bed tossing and turning, just tossing and turning. I don't get my sleep. I fall behind. And then if if I take it the other direction, I get up, I take my shower, um, I do my my exercise, then I'm invigorated and. Uh, and then you find me on the air. Yeah, it's another one of those mental tricks, right? Right, where it's like we feel tired, so we think that sleep must be the solution. But sometimes it's it's much more mental than it is physical. Especially if you know you've slept eight hours or nine hours or whatever, and you feel tired when you first wake up, it can be helpful to kind of challenge that a little bit and just you know say you know maybe if I get moving, I'm not actually as tired as it seems like I am right now. So. It all is, your all your points are good and uh, well received, Chris. Yeah, it's stunning to me how how much it wakes me up to just sort of like get myself moving and 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 do my morning exercises. Like I don't even need coffee, you know. As much as I do drink coffee, um, if I want to go off the coffee, I'm gonna get a headache after a certain amount of time because I have too much coffee. But if I go away from it, you know, and I I can sleep it off and everything. If I wake up um, and do that exercise, bang, I am, I am all about the energy at that point. Yeah, you're right. It is it is remarkable. And, and it's crazy how much we have to learn about our brains and our bodies to be able to, like, operate this machine to its maximum efficiency. Um, thank you for, for calling in and, and everything you've done to help support us. Um, let's see. I don't, I don't know... We're definitely going to do our, our Arcade Jeopardy again. We have a few prizes we can add in. We don't need to necessarily have you sponsor us. Um, but <laughs> honestly, if it, you doing that spurred everything to actually get it into motion. I, I know I, uh, I wanted some game shows. Uh, you offered it up. And it just sort of, it, it, it was the impetus we needed. So thank you so much for that. Hey, if that's... If that's all it took for me to do to like help you guys out, um, um, it's my pleasure. I I would do it every week. Well, that um, that being said, your your check ins really help as well. Like I'm I'm glad you're here. I feel better that you're here. I feel better for everybody else. You know, that you're here as a resource, even if even if they're feeling all right today, then I'm I'm still more happy that you're here. Yeah, it was good to it was good to get back in the swing of things. Here I am preaching about routine, so it's nice to get back to the six thirty check in routine. Thank you so, so much. So I'm uh, looking forward to hearing from everybody tomorrow evening. Um, take care of yourselves tonight. Take care of each other. And Chris, have a good evening. And uh, uh, don't don't work yourself too hard, okay? I will do. Will not do. We're just gonna talk <laughs> pinball, so it's not that hard, right? It, <laughs> all right, sounds do you, good. Do you want to leave us with any <laughs> thoughts on pinball? Do you play at all? Uh, thoughts on pinball. Every time I think about pinball, I think of when I went to summer camp and played, um... You had summer camp pinball? I want that summer camp. 
Yeah, no, it was, um, where was it? We would go to this, I don't think it was the arcade. No, it was in like the rec room. Yeah, we had like, um, I had, I went to what I call nerd camp because it was like a camp for, um, it was a camp for gifted kids and you could like take classes. Like, you're not gonna, you're not gonna go swimming. You're not gonna like, uh, you know, go, go make s'mores by the fire or whatever. You're gonna take chemistry classes for credit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But um, it was actually really fun because um, anyway, there's a lot of reasons I can go into all that. But um, uh, yeah, so we had a pinball game and it was called like Millionaire or something like that. I don't know. It wasn't like a brand name. It wasn't like Ghostbusters or I think I saw like an Aerosmith pinball game. Uh, um, who wants to be a millionaire pinball game? Is that what you're saying? It wasn't who wants to be a millionaire. It was just something about millionaires. Anyway. Yeah, I can still remember the music, and so let's see. Words of Wisdom on Pinball. Um, you are correct. Millionaire Pinball, 1987. When you no were, way. like, negative, I don't know how many years old, but yes, it is. Oh that is it. Oh, God. You nailed yes, it. Yes, this would have been around, like, 92 or so. Yeah, it's, um, the game came out in 1987. Just keep those flippers flipping. That's yeah. my advice. Just keep <laughs> the flippers flipping. Yeah, can you, can you see the stream? Um, let me... Get it back on my. Let's see. Okay, it's know. loading. I still just see me and Bud. Yeah, that's that's you and Bud. Although I will take that down and I will add this one right here, and it is Millionaire Pinball. Or at least it should be. There it is. I can't believe I didn't just imagine it or remember it. Does that look familiar? Yes, that's the one. Yeah, oh my there you god. Go. <laughs> Good job. So a little oh, early yeah. start to our pinballers. Um, yeah, we'll, incredible. We'll see you. Um, tomorrow at 6.30. Thanks for all your help, Sounds Corey. good. Yeah, thank you for that nostalgia, Chris. And whoever pulled that up, was that you or somebody else? That was me. That was me. Quick trip to Google. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Have You're a good welcome. night. See you later. All right, bye. Bye-bye. All right, that is Gory Midori, Angela Beard. She is a doctor, a clinical doctor of psychology. So if you are feeling blue, if there's anything bothering you as we're all stuck at home, she checks in every single day at 6.30 p.m. just to make sure we're... Up to, uh, I don't know, we're good to go. And uh, I'm going to take her advice. I generally do take her advice. So at 10 a.m., I'm going to go for a walk, and I will definitely put it in the Discord when, I, when I'm when i going to take my walk around the, on the, around the park if anyone wants to join me. And when I say around the park, sorry, around the block. 